Welcome back to The F Word, a series about adopting a kid from foster care. I don't know what to do about this awkward in-betweener stage we're in. We finished our paperwork, we turned it into the social worker, we have been, like, signed off on. We're, I think, technically licensed foster parents right now. Stamped. Yeah, we've been stamped on our foreheads, and now we just sit on our hands and wait for God knows how long. months were horrible for me. They were horrible. I, <laughs> that was the year I canceled the holidays. <laughs> Tarika, this is Nicole and Kristen. Hi, Tarika. Special delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole and Kristen are adopting a baby right now. Do you have any advice for them? Oh, we'd love to hear your advice. <laughs> Do you think that that they should adopt a baby? Uh, maybe. <laughs> you So we saw his picture. He is just like a dumpling. He lived in a home that was kind of like a group home. He'd seen kids come and go, and just you know, no one came for him. We met Kenyon on a Friday and just immediately fell in love. You know, I'm biracial and having grown up in African-American communities, we thought he would be a great match for us. He was like the cutest little baby in the whole world. <laughs> Not that we're biased or anything. <laughs> Is that totally embarrassing when they say that about you, or are you cool with it? <laughs> <laughs> what surprised you about the process that you just weren't expecting? Well, certainly it moved more quickly than we expected. That was surprising. Um, there were a lot of surprising things that happened once... Um, <laughs> did you just say he's getting old? He did say he's getting old. <laughs> he's noticing the spots on his hands, yeah, the can, age spots. Can we get spots. a close-up on that, please? <laughs> I mean, the thing about adopting through foster care is there's a lot of it that's out of your control because you don't know when the kid's going to come along, when you're going to be offered a child, and then this will be the kid that you have for the rest of your life. So you have to take a huge leap of faith. Were there other things that kind of, um, other fantasies or myths that were kind of exploded for you? Yeah. I was prepared for anything. We like, were hunkered down. I was we like, were... there's going to be fires lit, there's going to be feces thrown, there's going to be death, there's going to be pentagrams, there's going to be like, you know, all like kinds all of... Like all the scary things they the, tell you. Yeah. We felt like, how do we know we're not about to ruin our lives? And so, um, you know, we were driving, we pulled the car over, um, and we just held hands and we prayed. And then, you know, and when we were done, Scott was like, well, you gotta believe in someone sometime. So, I'm gonna believe in this kid. So since you're, you've turned into such an amazing human being, um, we're also kind of hoping that maybe you have some advice for us, like as, a couple of people who want to adopt. Why are you adopting boys or girls? We don't know. We sort of secretly have a preference for boys, but we're telling the social worker that it doesn't matter. Um, okay, well, if they want a video game system, wait until they're 10. It's not anything live, right? Is this like a Harry Potter kind of sword? Too big for these boots. They're almost. Mm. What were some of the things that people said to you all once you said you were gonna adopt? Like, yeah. 
We just got so, I mean, you tell me, we just had so many stories like, oh, my sister's best friend was fostering and then they came in the middle of the night and took the child. And it's just horrible. It's like, People tell oh, you. Oh, my friend got a, was fostering a baby and burned their house down and blah, blah, blah. Like, they may be otherwise very well-intentioned, intelligent people. Uh, but when you talk about, you know, foster adopting um, or fostering, people tell you these gruesome stories, which is why I, I write about it. I was adopted and, you know, there's never any question. You know, like, is this, is this a valid way to create a family? Um, like, a, you know, is this a real family? Tarika used to feel bad for Scott because he's not adopted. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, like I was adopted, he was adopted, the doggies were adopted, <laughs> everyone here is adopted except Scott. <laughs> oh man. Oh, there's a really cute kid crossing the street right now. Over on the corner. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's too far. Come closer. They're gonna come closer. Come closer, we have a cute dog for you to cut. Oh. What about during the waiting period? Like, we may be waiting another six months or another 16 months. We don't know. Is there anything you recommend we do or just think about? So the waiting period's important, and there will be ups and downs during that waiting period as you um, get your hopes up about a child and then it doesn't work out. And um, I think it's really important for you guys to be really kind to one another because I think that it uh, can be painful. Well, I really actually wanted to go on a trip. I had this kind of trip planned for the two of us and William was really eager to move forward as fast as possible with um, adoption and sure enough, boom. And so the trip never happened. So what I'd say is go on that trip. How did we get two kids, you know what I mean, that fit so well in this family? Terika was so rhythmic and like loved music and loved dancing. It's just like fits in perfect yeah. with us. And then when I first met Jovi, I was like, it's just in the stars that these are our kids. Yeah.